As a child, when I looked up at the sky, I was always curious about the stars. And among these countless stars is our tiny planet, Earth. From the depths of her oceans to the peaks of her mountains, she's beaming with life and she's beautiful to me. It is the only place that we all call home. When I travel out, just like stars, I see countless cows and buffaloes. What is their story? How are they connected to us? And how did they become such an integral part of our identity? Come with me on a journey to find out the story of cows and buffaloes of India. Hi, I am Dr. Harsha. I studied medicine to treat human ailments. By choice, however, I became an investigative documentarian. I was born into a middle-class Indian family, and like many Indians, I grew up eating meat and eggs. I used to enjoy eating all kinds of meat. Even then, I called myself an animal lover, as I was proud of my food choices. All this changed during my third year of medical school, when one day I accidentally happened to visit a meat market. I immediately decided to find out more. The more I researched about the meat industry, the uglier it appeared. I had two choices, either to willfully ignore the facts I discovered and continue what everyone in the society is doing, or to go against the society norms, even if I have to face mockery and criticism. My defensive arguments for meat consumption fell apart in an instant and overnight I decided to become a vegetarian. After I cleared my medical license exam, I decided to pursue my passion for Indian and Western philosophy before preparing for a job. During this time, I read biographies and works of many great thinkers. I went on to learn about Jainism and then came upon Bhagavad Gita. These books changed my life. I began to understand the concept of ahimsa, which loosely translates to non-violence. All this reading taught me to be empathetic towards animals. The more I read, the more I learned, leading me to the fact that the cruelty didn't begin with the slaughter of the cow or buffalo, but much earlier it began with the production of its milk. So I decided to remove all commercial dairy products from my diet. However, I still believed in Gaushala milk or Ahimsa milk, the milk taken from well-looked after animals. After all, the Krishna temple I used to visit swore by it and said it was the only milk they offered to the gods and for food preparations. I was in the temple one day. I saw a truck enter from the back gate and the temple staff unloaded dozens of boxes. To my surprise, inside were hundreds of commercial milk packets. When I questioned the temple authorities, they told me to ignore it. Then I came to the conclusion that there is no such thing as Ahimsa milk. I decided to quit consuming dairy altogether. A few days later, one of my colleagues offered me a milk-based sweet. When I refused, she inquired if I'm a vegan. Are you a vegan? That's how I first heard that word. After looking it up on the internet, I discovered that there were many people like me all over the world. A year later, I took my parents' permission and left my well-paying job to deeply study the matter. For two years, whenever I travelled within India, I spoke to people from various backgrounds about their views on animal cruelty. Given the growing number of open slaughterhouses visible in India, most people openly admit the cruelty in the meat and egg industry. But when I asked if they ever thought about avoiding milk and milk products because of the cruelty associated with it, I received resistance. Common responses I received were, कर्मा 
What about my protein? Pora. What about he? Tairi ne konde endi jaya. Chatne su. Maja chaat shiva rau chakar mein. Maja sirganda chakar. What about ice cream? I couldn't understand why when it comes to dairy, people in general could not believe there can be cruelty involved in producing milk. I approached public speakers, influencers, journalists and even news channels to look into animal cruelty. But nobody seemed willing to tell these stories. I wanted to understand what is the reality today? How did we get here? As my culture's entire relationship with cows and buffaloes revolves around milk, I began my investigation by looking at milk consumption data. The dairy industry today is divided into two categories: the organized sector where milk is procured, processed, packed and distributed by cooperatives like Amul and Nandini and the unorganized sector consisting of traditional tabelas, milkmen, local vendors and family owned animals. The organized sector accounts for only 20% of all milk production in India whereas the unorganized sector takes up the remaining. According to the National Dairy Development Board, the national milk production has increased 19 fold in the past 60 years. All of this growth is attributed to India's white revolution, the world's largest dairy production and development campaign. In 2021, Employment in the dairy industry is estimated to support 10 crore households in India. The white revolution was actually named Operation Flood with the grand idea of flooding the nation and its markets with milk products. But what about the things that we are not really proud of? According to the USDA's report, India exported 16 lakh tons of both cow and buffalo meat in 2019. However, The Indian government data on apeda only shows the export of buffalo meat. An estimated 95 lakh buffaloes were killed in the year 2020 for beef exports, whereas 2.25 crore cows and buffaloes were killed for domestic beef consumption. India kills a shockingly high number of bovine animals. If these cows and buffaloes killed for consumption were humans, it would be the same as wiping out the human populations of Mumbai, Pune and Hyderabad combined every single year. Today, India is one of the top beef exporting nations in the world, and these numbers are only going up each passing year. In the West, the relationship of humans with cows is purely economical. It begins with the cows getting artificially impregnated the cows then deliver babies who are then immediately separated from their mothers the milk is denied to the calves and is taken solely for human consumption when she runs dry the mother cow is slaughtered if the calf is male he is killed for veal and soft leather or is sent to beef farms where he is fed until he grows big only to be slaughtered if the calf is female she is raised as a replacement for her mother and this cycle repeats while most of the dairy industry outside india depends exclusively on cows buffaloes are also used in some cases and male calves are thrown in rivers because they do not give milk what about india after learning about beef consumption and exports a few things bothered me where does all this beef come from what is happening in the west does it happen in india too We often see farms where chickens and goats are raised exclusively for meat in India. But where are all these beef farms located? How does the beef trade operate here? I was surprised that when I browsed the internet, I did not find a single beef farm in India like the ones we see in the West. However, there are over 110 government approved buffalo slaughterhouses all over India. These are just the legal abattoirs and no one knows how many are operating underground and illegally. To find out what happens inside slaughterhouses, we spoke to slaughterhouse workers who agreed to meet with us. At the slaughterhouse, as soon as we uttered the word beef, the people there tried to back out from the meeting. During our discussion, I realized that they were the owners of the slaughterhouse, not the butchers. They also refused to let us speak to them. We also tried to reach out to a few more butchers but no one agreed to an interview. We hit a dead end. Through inquiry with local animal rescuers, we discovered that beef traders are supported by some local politicians. They warned me not to investigate it any further unless I was willing to risk my life. 
another dead end. However, I also got to know that the same politicians were also closely associated with dairy farms. It seems to me that there is a link between dairy farms and slaughterhouses. Since cows and buffaloes are seen in dairy farms, in search of answers, we visited a local dairy farm. At the farm, the hygiene was terrible for the humans who worked there, and even more so for the animals. As a doctor, I can say it is an environmental and occupational hazard. The conditions in other dairy farms were equally worrisome. the dairy farm owners had reinforced my suspicions about the link between dairy farms and slaughterhouses although the evidence I had was still not conclusive. But before investigating that any further, I wanted to know more about our relationship with dairy animals. Turns out, consuming milk of another mammal began with humans shifting from hunting and gathering to farming and domesticating cows around 10,000 years ago. These cows and bulls were mainly used in agriculture for transport, milk, as property, and on some occasions as meat, when conditions were harsh and food was scarce. A noticeable difference is that Indian cattle have humps, while European ones do not. However, both belong to the same family of cattle. The various cattle breeds that we see today in India are a result of human activity through selective breeding of the subspecies Zebu, much like dog breeds that once originated from wolves. Over thousands of years, as our ancestors migrated, they took their domesticated animals with them. Our lifestyles became wholly dependent on cows. Our culture evolved around them. When cows were affected, human existence too was affected. No cows meant no milk, no bulls for transport and plowing the lands, and no food. Hence, cows were revered as an embodiment of all gods or as a Divine Mother by Hindus. This Vedic tradition can be witnessed even today. For Hindus, cows became a part of the extended family. Buffaloes, on the other hand, are estimated to have been domesticated at a much later date, about 5,000 years ago. All the buffalo breeds in India originated from the water buffalo. However, it may not have been the best time for animals. It was common to sacrifice animals while worshipping deities and for food. Several instances of animal sacrifices have been recorded. There is even a mention of Gavalambaha, which means the killing of a cow. So it is likely that cow slaughter was carried out. It was probably around this time that humans evolved to realize that even animals experience pain. For example, in the Mahabharata, which was believed to have happened around 3000 BCE, when Yudhishthira asks his grandfather, Bhishma, about the merits of abstaining from meat, Bhishma talks at length about violence or himsa in killing animals. From this we know that Bhishma himself was a practicing vegetarian. However, vegetarianism was practiced only by a few communities and individuals. As Buddhism and Jainism grew and spread across the Indian subcontinent, their teachings of karuna, 
Jeevadaya and Ahimsa brought vegetarianism to the mainstream. At the same time, Ayurveda, the ancient traditional Indian system of medicine, also evolved, prescribing many plant-based medicines. This popularized vegetarianism even more. Even in Patanjali Yoga Sutra, the first step of yoga is not about body stretching or warm-up, but about the practice of Ahimsa. Unless one practices Ahimsa, one cannot progress in yoga. As time went on, animal sacrifices were transformed into rituals like breaking coconuts with the aim of merging non-violence or Ahimsa with tradition. Ahimsa became a hallmark, a core value of Indian culture, something even foreign travelers recognized when they visited India. Fashion, a Chinese Buddhist monk who visited India in the 4th century, wrote, India is a strange country. People do not kill any living creatures, do not keep pigs and fowl, and do not sell live cattle. By then, the Indian subcontinent was largely vegetarian, and cow slaughter was considered to be a sin and was opposed unanimously. However, those who did not align with vegetarian principles still sacrificed other animals. Today, the majority of Hindu temples and rituals are strictly vegetarian and do not encourage or promote animal sacrifices. In many ways, vegetarianism is a result of how ethics, compassion and rationality have evolved. But is vegetarianism still a rational choice today? I asked some animal rights activists and rescuers. The dairy industry, which ये हर क्रूरता के जड़ है अगर आप सारे तबेले देखें तो गाय अपने गोबर में पूरे दिन खड़ी रहती है कोई एक्सरसाइज नहीं खाना कभी सूखा भूसा कभी गंद बला जो दिया जाता है अभी अभी गौशालों में 150 गाय एक ही दिन में मर गए क्योंकि फंगस वाला खाना उसको दे रहे थे एंड क्योंकि वो कभी एक्सरसाइज नहीं की जाती उसको अर्थराइटिस होता है उसको ट्यूबरक्यूलोसिस होता है उसको कम से कम आठ से दस बीमारियां ऐसे होती हैं जो बहुत ही गंभीर हैं और सबसे गंभीर जो बीमारी है वो है ब्रुसेलोसिस और गंभीर इसलिए मैं बोल रही हूँ इसलिए नहीं कि बाकी कम गंभीर है इसलिए गंभीर क्योंकि जब आप दूध पिएंगे उस गाय से तो वो गाय का जो ब्रुसेलोसिस है वो इंसान में ट्यूबरक्यूलोसिस बन जाता है जो हिंदुस्तान में ट्यूबरक्यूलोसिस इतनी बुरी तरह से फैल गया है उस सब का जड़ वो गाय का के साथ ब्रुसेलोसिस का दूध पीना करंटली इंडिया इज द लार्जेस्ट प्रोड्यूसर ऑफ मिल्क इन द वर्ल्ड ऑलमोस्ट 19 टू 20% ऑफ द टोटल प्रोडक्शन कम्स फ्रॉम इंडिया सो ऑब्वियसली व्हेन सप्लाई इज टेलर मेड फॉर द डिमांड द कंडीशंस ऑफ प्रोडक्शन विल ऑलवेज बी क्वेश्चनेबल स्पेशली बिकॉज़ दिस इज नॉट एन इनएनिमेट इंडस्ट्री so from a detailed study done by FIAPO and various other sources also between 2012 and 2018, we come to know that a large number of uh, foreign breeds have been introduced into the country to accelerate the produce of milk supply. Now, uh, these are um, foreign breeds like Jersey, HF, etc. Now, these breeds are forced to produce 20 liters of milk a day as against a cow's natural capacity to supply one to four liters when a mother cow is feeding the calf. It's selfishness of people. People care only for their profit as long as the animals, the cows or buffaloes, as long as they can get profit from them, they will keep them. And when the milk is finished and the calf uh, is abandoned, the buffalo calf will be slaughtered, sent to slaughter, which is horrible because they are just as emotional and, and, and affectionate and kind and friendly as a cow calf. They may not be uh, the seed of devtas, as the god, uh, god, uh, god and goddesses, but they are just very emotional and very sweet. And the cows, if they not get, don't get um, pregnant fast enough, they will be abandoned also. And when they get old, then they will be abandoned also. And the whole life they, uh, they have given milk and people have profited from them. And now they are old and they are sent on the street to have an accident to get sick and even if they don't at the end of life they will sit and they will remain sitting without food and, and, and water and uh, before they die and the dogs may even eat them alive because that is what happens and the buffaloes are all getting killed. 
all of them are killed cruelly. The whole life they have been profited from, and in the end they go to a horrible death. बच्चा होता है तो बच्चे को माँ का दूध पी जाती है तो उनको बेचने के लिए धंधा करने के लिए दूध नहीं मिलता है तो बच्चे को जिंदा बच्चे को ट्रक से फेंक देते हैं या तो फिर वो लोग इंजेक्शन दे के मार देते हैं या तो बहुत दिन से बांध के रखे मैं आंखों से देखा उसको दूध देते नहीं बहुत दिन से बांध के रखते हैं तो दूध नहीं है पेट पूरा अंदर चला जाता है उसका पूरा कॉलम ये हो जाता है ना तो कहीं फेंक देते हैं एज पर माई नॉलेज इट इज़ बिजनेस फॉर देम बिकॉज इन दिस विलेज ऑल्सो वेर आई स्टे तलोजा यहाँ पर भी काफ़ी सारे गौशाला है लेकिन आप वहाँ पे देखिए किसी को आप ये नज़र नहीं आएगा कि उनको कोई उनकी आंखें क्या बोलती हैं उनकी क्या फीलिंग है दैट कोई नहीं समझेगा लेकिन हाँ उनका दूध कितना लीटर निकला ये खिलाने से दूध ज़्यादा निकलेगा ये सब चीज़ें का नॉलेज है उनको लेकिन उनकी अपनी फीलिंग क्या है दे ऑल्सो नीड रेस दे ऑल्सो नीड दैट टाइम वो उनको फीलिंग नहीं है हमारे देश में लोगों को आदत पड़ गई है भैंसों को बंधा हुआ देखने की गायों को बंधा हुआ देखने की उनके बच्चों को मरते हुए देखने की और किसी को कोई फ़र्क ही नहीं पड़ता क्योंकि हम उसको एक बिनाइन सी वो मानते हैं कि तो फार्मिंग है तो बेचारा गरीब आदमी है चाहे उसके पास अस्सी भैंसे हों उसको गरीब सा आदमी है और वट असल बात यह है कि किसी भी माँ को दूध तभी आता है जब उसका बच्चा होता है डेरियों में बच्चों को भूखा मार दिया जाता है जिस दिन से वो जिस मिनट से पैदा होते हैं उनको माँ से अलग कर दिया जाता है ये एक क्रिमिनल ऑफेंस है कि हम माओ को बच्चों से अलग कर देते हैं बच्चों को भूखा मरने देते हैं लेकिन हम इसको रिपोर्ट भी नहीं करते प्रिवेंशन ऑफ क्रूल्टी टू एनिमल्स एक्ट में खास तौर पर लिखा है कि हम आ, किसी भी जानवर को अननेसेसरी पेन एंड सफरिंग नहीं दे सकते ये गाय भैंसें बहुत इंटेलिजेंट पशु होते हैं दे आर वेरी इंटेलिजेंट इनके अंदर उतनी ही मातृत्व की भावना होती है जितनी इंसानों में होती है ये शायद हमसे भी ज़्यादा और इनसे जब इनके बच्चे छीन लिए जाते हैं क्योंकि उनका दूध जो है वो किसी को अपनी चाय में डालना है तो ये बहुत बहुत ज़्यादा मानसिक और शारीरिक पीड़ा से गुजरते हैं बीफ इंडस्ट्री जो है वो बिना डेयरी के पॉसिबल नहीं ठीक है क्योंकि कोई भी एक गाय या भैंस को इतने साल खिला के पालना बड़ा महंगा पड़ जाएगा तो वो जो डिस्काउंट होता है वो डिस्काउंट डेयरी वाले कराते हैं क्योंकि हम एक गाय पालना उनके लिए आसान बनाते हैं कुछ टाइम के लिए दूध साठ रुपए किलो या कहीं सत्तर रुपए किलो या कहीं कम सस्ता महंगा बिक रहा है तो इट्स अ गुड मनी फॉर दोज विलेजर्स वो पैसे के लिए उसको रखना शुरू करते हैं बट जब वो दूध देना बंद कर देते हैं तो उसको नहीं पाल पाते क्यों क्योंकि दूध से डिस्काउंट मिल रहा था तो अगर डेयरी इंडस्ट्री नहीं होगी तो इतना आसान नहीं होगा बीफ मिल पाना गाय अगर बच्चा देती है अगर वो फीमेल काफ हो तो उसको अपने साथ रखा जाता है लाइक फीमेल बछड़ा और अगर वो मेल हो तो मेल का नॉर्मली कुछ यूज़ नहीं होता बहुत सारे कम फार्मर्स हैं जो उनको रखते खेती के लिए बट अभी खेती भी ऑलमोस्ट ट्रैक्टर के द्वारा ही की जाती है तो वो मेल काफ को बेच देते हैं स्लॉटर हाउस में या फिर वो लेदर कंपनीज को और ये गाय फिर जाती है कतल के ट्रकों में भर भर करके भर भर करके जाते हैं अब ये जो गाय जाती है बहुत ही बुरी तरह से काटते हैं जिसको कहते हैं मॉडर्न स्लॉटर हाउस उसमें वो भैंस को के पैर पर बेड़ी डाल देते हैं एक पैर पर और उसको एकदम से झटके से ऊपर उल्टा टांग देते हैं इसमें वो टांग टूट जाती है उसके बाद एक लाइन में भैंसों को डालते हैं जिंदा है पहले तो उबला हुआ पानी उनके ऊपर डालते हैं ताकि उनके शरीर त्वचा जो है वो हल्की हो जाए उसके बाद उसका गर्दन काटते हैं थोड़ा सा ताकि खून निकलता रहे खून निकलता निकलते जाता है क्योंकि खून वो बेचते हैं दवाई की इंडस्ट्री को ये जो आयरन टॉनिक और आप सब लेते हैं ये वही खून है फिर उसके बाद वो उसका चमड़ा उतारना शुरू कर देता है जिंद जिंदा भैंस से और उसके बाद ही वो गाय भैंस जो भी है मर जाती है ये मॉडर्न स्लॉटर हाउस जिसको कहते हैं जो केरला के स्लॉटर हाउसेज हैं उनका भी अनोखा तरीका है गाय भैंस को मारने का और वो ये है कि वो हथौड़ा लेते हैं और सिर पर हथौड़ा तब तक मारते हैं जब तक पूरा मुंह शरीर फट ना जाए और क्यों करते हैं क्योंकि वो कहते हैं कि इससे मांस मीठा होता और जगहों में तो वो कभी रस्टेड ब्लेड के साथ करते हैं कभी छुरी के साथ करते हैं लेकिन पंद्रह मिनट से आधा घंटा लगता है उस गाय या भैंस को मरने के लिए 
अभी अभी हमने एक ट्रक पकड़ा जो जा रही थी बंगाल क्योंकि बंगाल में इजाज़त है गाय को काटने के लिए तो यहाँ से सारे गाय वहाँ भी जाते हैं और केरला जाते हैं ये दोनों स्टेट हमारे अनफॉर्चुनेटली लूप होल्स हैं तो हमने पकड़ा एक गाय जो एक ट्रक जो जा रही थी उसमें छः गाय होने के बजाय उसमें साठ गाय थे और सब के सब गर्भवती थे और क्योंकि एक के ऊपर एक एक के ऊपर एक ठूसे गए थे इस ट्रक में उनके पेट पर इतना दबाव हो गया था कि फीचर्स बाहर निकला हुआ था और वो पूरा ट्रक खून से भर भर करके फीटसेस भी माँ भी रोए फीटस भी मरी हुई निकली ट्रक के पीछे पीछे से खून निकलते निकलते ऐसे तो हमने पहचाना नहीं तो वो बंद कर देते हैं स्मगलर्स ताकि आप पहचान ना पाए गिवन दैट द काउ इज डीपली रूटेड इन द इंडियन आइडेंटिटी काउ स्लॉटर हैज ऑल्सो बिकम अ जियो पोलिटिकल टूल हेंस माई परस्यूज फॉर आंसर्स डिंट एंड हेयर एंड आई हैड मोर क्वेश्चन Since my attempts to approach beef traders was a dead end, I decided to meet Gaurakshaks, the people who are often blamed for what is called cow vigilantism. Strangely, many of the Gaurakshaks I approached were also reluctant to speak on camera. I finally managed to get one Gaurakshak who agreed to do an interview with me. Kasai lobby itni powerful hai Kasai lobby ke inke paas लाखों का धंधा है एक एक दो दो करोड़ का आप सोच सकते हैं जो 3500 किलो मैंने गौ मास का गाड़ी पकड़ा था अगर वो 300 रुपया पकड़ते 300 रुपया 3500 किलो तो आज वो बारह चौदह लाख का होता है आप सोच सकते हैं वो आइसर गाड़ी 18 20 लाख का आज मांडवी चौकी पे ऐसे ही सड़ रहा है आज छः महीना होने को आया तो ये लोग भी इतनी पावरफुल है कि कल हमको हमारा एक्सीडेंट भी करवा सकती है हमें तीन टाइम पुलिस के सामने मारा गया है पुलिस डिपार्टमेंट के सामने और अभी तो एक महीने ये बीस दिन महीने पहले पुलिस को भी मारा गया हमारे गौरक्षक राजेश पाल को 200 सौ जन ने मॉब लिंचिंग करके मारा तो इस सिचुएशन से हम गौरक्षा करते जो काम प्रशासन का है दिस एक्सप्लेन वाई मैनी गौरक्षक बिकॉज दे वर थ्रेटेंड बाई करप्ट लॉ एनफोर्समेंट ऑफिशियल्स लोकल पोलिटिशन एंड बुचर्स In some cases, there is corruption within the community. पकड़ते तो क्या है जो गोरक्षक बन के रहते हैं ना वो रुकाते हैं उनको बीस हजार देते हैं वो कार स्टार्ट करके चले जाते हैं उसका ट्रक लेके चलता था ओरिजिनल तो ही है अच्छा है सब लेते हैं तो क्या है दूध देगा एक गोरक्षक क्या होता है पैसा धंधा बना के यार भैया सबका अपना अपना धंधा है धंधा तो क्या है धर्मभ्रष्ट करने की बात है या किसी के सामने आओ मत ना यार गोरक्षक तो घर के बैठ जाना लेकिन क्या रोकते पैसे देते भग जाते Sometimes Gorakshaks receive information about cow smuggling from the butchers themselves who leak the information to destroy their competitors beef trade. This was a whole new level of complexities. It turns out that cows have been prominent in Indian politics for ages. Cow slaughter is strictly condemned throughout the Bhagavatam which implies that they were slaughtered even during those times. The Vishnu Puranam for example states that in Kali Yugam the present age of Kali one should not perform sacrificial killing of cows it was prohibited because it was practiced if it wasn't practiced it wouldn't be prohibited the idea of using cows for political gains with little consideration to the welfare of cows is common practice in many parts of the country now However, using cows for political gains is nothing new and goes back many centuries. When the British came to India because they were used to consuming large quantities of milk products, they established dairy farms in their major settlements. Simultaneously, they also began constructing slaughterhouses for their desire to consume beef. Practices such as hookah or dhoomdev blowing air into a cow's vagina for excess milk took place in and around british settlements this also led mahatma gandhi to quit consuming milk from cows and buffaloes after world war 2 dairy farmers were in chaos and to counter the exploitation by the british a cooperative union was formed in gujarat it was during this time vergis kurian who later came to be known as the father of white revolution stepped in and co-founded Amul in 1957 and the NDDB in 
the Indian government also actively supported the establishment of the dairy businesses. More than nutrition, dairy was looked at as a tool for economic empowerment. In fact, in the 1960s, when Operation Flood was proposed to developed countries for funds, they openly criticized India saying, Should valuable land be diverted from food production to animal feed production, they asked. To which Vergis Kurian himself said, The criticism did have some validity. Amul, through crowdfunding, made a movie in 1976 called Manthan, which encouraged the people across India to step into the dairy business. By this time, artificial insemination was made popular. As time progressed, the dairy farmers and unions grew in numbers. The government's incentives for dairy farmers also increased. Around the same time, Hindu organizations demanded an end to cow slaughter. Governments, however, paid little to no heed. These demands eventually culminated in the form of the anti-cow slaughter agitation. On the 7th of November 1966, thousands gathered in Delhi and marched towards the parliament demanding the immediate nationwide ban on cow slaughter. In response to this, the then Indira Gandhi-led government ordered the police to fire at the crowd. Following this incident, fearing fallout, these developments forced Indira Gandhi to set up a panel to see if a nationwide ban on cow slaughter was feasible. Committee members included Shankaracharya of Puri, Vargis Kurian and others. I found out more about what happened during the committee meetings when I read Kurian's autobiography. He said, My brief was to prevent any ban on cow slaughter. It was important for us in the dairy business to keep weeding out the unhealthy cows so that available resources could be utilized for healthy and productive cattle. Shankaracharya and I took spontaneous dislike of one another. I was prepared to go as far as to allow that no useful cow should be killed. This was the point on which the Shankaracharya and I invariably locked horns and got into heated arguments. I constantly asked him, Your Holiness, are you going to take all the useless cows which are not producing anything and look after them and feed them till they die? You know that cannot work. He never had any answer to my query. This was the direct link between dairy and beef. Here's a statement from the man who built the dairy industry from the ground up, agreeing to what the activists were saying all along. That was precisely the root of the problem that dairy farmers are encouraged to get rid of the unproductive animals by slaughter. But in their defense, like Kurian said, where else are they going to go? Who's going to take care of them? As the dairy consumption increased over the decades, the population of animals also went up, mainly through industrial breeding practices. This massively increased the scale of beef and leather exports from India. Unlike the rest of the world, in India, the dairy farms are inherently designed keeping in mind the beef industry and other byproducts. They keep the beef industry in business. What this ultimately means is that consuming dairy products is the same as supporting the slaughter of these animals. Today's India is very different from the newly independent India. The country is aggressively shifting from agrarian to an industrial and capitalist nation and dairy too has become an industry. Milk and milk products today are marketed and sold in countless varieties, both edible and non-edible. It is worth noting that since the white revolution, the load of milk production has largely depended on buffaloes and not cows. Even though both cows and buffaloes involved in the white revolution faced slaughter, Hindu societies focused their attention solely on cows. Mainly for its religious significance, the discussions were limited only to cow protection. Even today, barely anyone speaks for the protection of buffaloes because of their negative connotations in Hindu texts. One story is that of Mahishasur, a demon in the form of a buffalo who was killed by Goddess Durga. Another story is that the buffalo is the vehicle of Yamaraj, the Lord of Death. Therefore, in India, people perceive buffaloes negatively and consider them to be lazy, unintelligent and unholy in comparison to cows. 
Ironically, Indians today consume more buffalo milk than cow milk and rarely think of a buffalo's negative attributes while doing so. The committee formed in 1967 was to submit a report in six months, but kept delaying it for 12 years. When Murarji Desai became the Prime Minister, the committee was abolished without even a request to submit a report. As per Article 37 and 48 of the Indian Constitution, with exception for international trade, organizations of agriculture and animal husbandry fall under the purview of states. And only the states can decide a ban on slaughter of cows, that is if they wish to. For international trade, India banned cow beef exports, however, allowed buffalo beef to be exported in the name of cara beef. The bull, calf or the cow, we do not export. Protection of the bull, calf and the cow and the livestock related issues are managed by the states. We don't allow export of any of these. But however, in the West, there is an expression called kara beef which is used for buffaloes. The buffaloes are permitted, we can export buffaloes. We are the world's largest beef exporters. And this beef that we call bhaiz, this is bhaiz and gai dono ka mila hua hai, koi check karne wala hai nahi. Kyunki is mein karodo rupay bande hua hai. As of mid-2022, nine states and two union territories do not have any ban on cow and buffalo slaughter. 18 states and the remaining union territories, on the other hand, have a complete ban on cow and calf slaughter. However, for bulls, ox and buffalo calves, some states allowed it, while some didn't. Whereas for buffaloes, slaughter remains legal. Chhattisgarh is the only state in India that has a complete ban on all cow and buffalo slaughter and transport, irrespective of age and gender. These variations in laws and their poor enforcement lead to complicated problems like cattle being smuggled from states with a ban to states without one. So Coimbatore is a, like any, any uh, trucks that come that have to go to Kerala uh, has to pass through Coimbatore. Uh, so when Coimbatore stopped that, all the trucks that had to go to Kerala suffered. So there were meetings after meetings, the chief secretaries, everybody was called. So it was like a powerful political uh, scenario where uh, you know the the question of Coimbatore cannot just do it we have to allow the traffic and we said follow the laws and you do it follow the laws as per PCA act we do it as per the regulations nobody was willing to uh, accept it because it wouldn't uh, give them uh, the kind of profits that they were uh, expecting and it would be a huge loss for them if they did it so, um, making it difficult is one way that we can see that things can come down. But how do you enforce such laws? Who is there to enforce them? The ones who enforce themselves are party to the, uh, you know, uh, what you call the industry of collecting bribes. And it, it is a huge, uh, I mean, you, you, you have, the bribing happens from one end to the other end. Every check post, it is there. Illegal transport of animals to neighboring countries like buffaloes to Nepal, cows to Bangladesh and even Pakistan is a result of poor enforcement of animal protection laws. Hidden slaughterhouses within the cities where beef is mixed with mutton and body fat with ghee are commonly known. Loosely enforced laws, biased news reporting, corruption and negligence among law enforcers ultimately creates room for religious tensions, black money human trafficking and even terrorism. There is a place in the name of Dehradun, where I belong to. It's called Inamullah Building. There is actually a lot of time in the past, and in that place, there was a lot of time. And in that place, many times, the terrorists of the country also took the country. किसी भी शहर की सबसे क्रिमिनल जगह वो ही होती है जहाँ पे बहुत सारे पशुओं को काटा जाता है क्योंकि ऐसे लोग जिनको चाकू छुरे खून वगैरह से कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं होती वो ही तमाम तरह के अन्य क्राइम्स की ओर भी ग्रेजुएट करते हैं एक बहुत बड़ा आईजी था जिसका नाम है शैलजकांत मिश्र उन्होंने एक स्टडी क 
बांग्लादेश में भेजने वाले लोग हैं दिस इज इंटायरली गोइंग टूवर्ड्स गन्स एंड द डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द इंडियन स्टेट ये जो आप सोचते हो कि हल्कापन है जानवरों की ही सौदा कर रहे हैं ये पूरे हिंदुस्तान की सेफ्टी एंड सिक्योरिटी का सौदा होता है एंड दिस इज नॉट वट आई एम सेंग दिस इज वॉट द पुलिस हैज सेड अगेन एंड अगेन कि ये सबसे खतरनाक धंधा है because the root problem of inability to provide welfare for dry animals was never addressed the problems have persisted and so have the conflicts the dairy industry thrives on selling unproductive animals for slaughter and resists laws that challenges it the introduction of stringent anti cow slaughter laws for example in the state of up focused on banning illegal slaughter houses and not on rehabilitation of stray animals Since the dairymen failed to feed unproductive animals and couldn't sell them for slaughter, they started abandoning cows and bulls onto the streets. These stray cattle became a nuisance to many farmers as they started feeding on the crops. Even schools were shut down when farmers got fed up and sent stray animals to schools as a protest. Some have even thrown acid to kill them. Once abandoned onto the streets, these animals either get kidnapped for slaughter meet with road accidents eat plastics and other harmful waste items or starve and die animals are kidnapped even from rescue shelters and goshalas that day what happened that side the camel was you know where we were unloading and this side three bulls were cut off from their you know uh, the place where it was kept and uh, we could not uh, trace it while traveling with my team for an interview i saw an injured cow on the road while we stopped to get her to a proper shelter she ate a plastic bag plastics have become a huge problem for stray animals to discuss the issue i met hanuman ji who performs plastic removal surgery from the stomachs of animals to kisi ka phone aaya tha hamare paas ki road pe wahan pe ek gau mata padi hai तो हम लोगों ने जाके देखा वहाँ पे तो उसकी हालत बहुत ही खराब थी बहुत ही खराब पोजीशन में था पीछे भी बहुत बड़ा घाव हो गया था और उसका पैर टूट गया था और गाड़ी वाले ने ऐसी ठोकर मारी कि उसका कमर ही पूरा पूरा तोड़ दिया अंदर का सिस्टम पूरा तोड़ दिया ये जो दर्द है ये ही दर्द नहीं है इसका असली दर्द है इसके अंदर में इसके अंदर में क्या भरा हुआ है वो किसी को भी मालूम नहीं है इसके अंदर में कम से कम पच्चीस से तीस किलो प्लास्टिक का कचरा भरा होगा तो ये पीड़ा तो उसको है ही वो तो अपने को दिख रही है लेकिन जो अंदर वाली जो पीड़ा है प्लास्टिक का कचरा लोहे की कील कांच का टुकड़ा ये सब आइटम अंदर में है इसके रास्ते में कोई भी गो गो देखो आप रोड पे तो उसमें देख लेना कि उसमें कम से कम 30 से 35 किलो प्लास्टिक 100 परसेंट भरा ही होएगा। विथ ऑल हिज रिसोर्स हिज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कुड ओनली परफॉर्म हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी सर्जरीज टूडे देर आर अबाउट फिफ्टी लैक स्ट्रे कैटल ऑल ओवर इंडिया in every case they are abandoned because they are no longer economically viable the tragedy and its scale both are inconceivable none of these shelters or hospitals get any monetary support or funding from the governments you are getting any help from the government no not a single paisa not a single government nothing at all they gave me this award but it was it in the end cows and buffaloes are transported to slaughterhouses under inhuman conditions packed one on top of another not fed for days without water in extreme heat and cold weather to ek truck mein agar ek ek leke jayenge ya jitna law allow karta hai char leke jayenge ya panch leke jayenge to usme nuksan hai to ek truck mein agar aapko ek point a se point b tak un janwaron ko pahunchana hai to paisa bachane ka tarika kya hoga sabse acha ki ek truck mein jitne zyada janwar aa jaye तो आप इमेजिन नहीं कर सकते होंगे कि शायद एक ट्रक में 40 से 60 तो मिनिमम पाए ही जाते हैं तो 40 टू 60 एनिमल्स उन ट्रकों में भरा हुए होते हैं जो रोज कटने के लिए जाते हैं वंस द एनिमल्स रीच द स्लॉटर हाउसेस वेदर इट्स लीगल और इलीगल द सिचुएशन इज अनफॉर्चुनेटली द सेम हमने वहां पे देखा कि कैसे जानवरों को भैंसों को नीचे लेटा के रखा हुआ है उनके पैरों को बांधा हुआ है उनकी गर्दनों को खींचा हुआ है उनको मारने के लिए कैसे छोटी छोटी नालियां बनी हुई हैं जिनमें उनका खून बहता जा रहा है जितनी भी भैंसें काटी जा रही हैं 
क्या छोटे क्या बड़े सारी उम्र की भैंसे वहाँ पर थी जो कि एक दूसरे के सामने जिनको काटा जा रहा था उनको पूरा क्लियरली दिख रहा था कि शायद हमारे साथ भी ऐसा ही होने वाला है और ना सिर्फ ये बल्कि हमने ये भी देखा कि जो जानवर कटने के लिए लाइन में खड़े थे कतल खाने के बाहर जो शायद बूढ़ी भैंसे थीं और जिनका दूध कम हो जाता है उनका भी दूध आखिरी एक बूंद तक उनका दूध निचोड़ा जा रहा था कटते हुए जानवरों से भी आखिरी बूंद दूध की लो चली जाती है जब वो गाय कट रही होती है तब भी उसको ऑक्सीटोसिन का टीका लगा के जो उसकी थनों से आखिरी दूध दूध की बूंद होती है वो बोतलों में इकट्ठी की जा रही होती है कई बार हमें कॉलेज की तरफ से अगर फार्म पे पॉसिबल नहीं है तो स्लॉटर हाउसेस में ले जाया जाता है पर एक्टल एग्जामिनेशन वगैरह के लिए तो अगर हम उसके लिए जब जाते हैं तो जो एनिमल स्लॉटर होने जा रहे हमें उन पर करने बोलते हैं और उस टाइम पे हमें टीचर्स से बड़ा स्ट्रिक्ट इंस्ट्रक्शन मिलता है कि अगर तुमने परेक्टल एग्जामिनेशन के वक्त तुम्हें वो एनिमल प्रेग्नेंट समझा तो बताना मत जो स्लॉटर हाउस ने उनको ख़रीदा है उन्होंने काफ़ी पैसे दिए उसके लिए तो अगर वो एनिमल को हमने प्रेग्नेंट डिक्लेयर कर दिया तो उसको स्लॉटर नहीं कर पाएंगे और फिर उसको रखने का जो खर्चा है वो बढ़ जाएगा ये चीज़ हमारे साथ जब हुआ था जब मैंने पहली बार एक्सपीरियंस किया था तो काफ़ी बुरा लगा था जब सर ने मना किया कि नहीं कुछ बोल मत नहीं तो कॉलेज का जो कॉन्ट्रैक्ट है यहाँ आने का वो बंद हो जाएगा एट द स्लॉटर हाउस द एनिमल्स आर कन्वर्टेड इन टू बीफ देर बोन्स एंड टेंडेंस इन टू जेलेटिन एंड बोन शार देर स्किन इन टू लेदर स्वेड एंड डॉग चू स्टिक्स their horns into buttons and so on in the case of the mgatangam there are three animals uh, skins are used one is a goat other is the cow and the buffalo so three animals are uh, slaughtered to get uh, uh, the mgatangam in uh, current day scenario the cows are specifically slaughtered to make the uh, mgatangam membrane demand for dairy is also leading to a huge gender gap amongst bovine animals in the dairy business only females are preferred and males are starved to death according to the 20th livestock census only 25% of the cattle population is male whereas among buffaloes it's even worse only 10% of the buffalo population is male why are we largely unaware of the inhuman practices of the dairy industry To find out more, I travel 20,000 kilometers across India to meet people from different backgrounds connected to dairy. The more people I met, the more I saw a pattern emerge. To understand the system, imagine a chakra. The inner core axle is the dairy industry, while the outer rim is the beef industry. And the spokes that connect the axle to the outer rim are the factors that support the system. government of india sent me to japan for a month to study the food business while we were looking for what all is produced everywhere that we ate there would be some tofu then i understood that in rural areas in china and japan people just buy soy milk rather than cow's milk it's much cheaper and they take it away you see 1 kilo of soya bean can give you 7 liters of milk so the raw material cost of milk is hardly 7 rupees if you can make this milk available in rural india for people to take away as in china it will heavily cut the cost of nutrition for poor children i was convinced that soy had a market coming back to india i tried to convince nddb but the feeling was it will hurt the dairy industry when i looked at who was the head of nddb in those years it was none other than vargis kurian a few years after this ranjit ji took voluntary retirement and began researching soy products and started a business called chetran 
which presently sells soy milk, tofu or soy paneer, soy curd and other plant-based dairy alternatives. And many of Chetran's consumers are vegans. A lot of products are incredibly affordable in comparison to the animal-based counterparts. Many companies and brands are coming up all over India to provide dairy and meat alternatives. The business of plant-based companies were going well until November of 2020 when Amul, realizing the growing popularity of milk alternatives, filed an official complaint to the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. Amul CEO RS Sodhi stated that they have requested the FSSAI to remove the word milk from the labels of plant-based milk products, alleging that 10 crore farmers are going to fight this misinformation. One of his, Mr. Sodhi's complaints is that the milk industry benefits the milk farmer what he forgets is that the soy milk based industry benefits the soy farmer. And more he than has the, not He has not made that point in his tweet. And more than that, Chetan, it benefits the consumer. I mean, we are the only industry is using fresh ingredients to make the products, right? Directly from the nature. And we're making milk. So we, you know, like example, almond milk or, you know, cashew milk. Uh, it's it's win-win for farmers. We're directly sourcing from the farmers and utilizing it for uh, you know ourselves, and we're giving it to the customers. So everybody's happy here. You know, the customer is happy, the farmer is happy, the cow is even more happier, and we're not taking the milk from it. So I think he's coming from a perspective of only looking at his business. I decided to look into their objection to the usage of the word dood or milk for plant-based milk products. I wanted to see if their claims have any legitimacy. Mere paas ek dictionary hai, V S Apte Sanskrit English Dictionary. V S Apte is a, one of the considered to be one of the most authoritative dictionaries of Sanskrit. Dugdha, they say this is an adjective because in Sanskrit grammar, this word will be categorized as an adjective or a participle, basically. Dugdha means that which is milked, milked out, extracted, drawn out, milky juice of plants, the skim of milk, cream, or kya chahiye? A similar case went on in the European Union for some time. In May 2021, the EU officials rejected the dairy industry's petition seeking ban and spoke in favour of plant-based dairy companies. Francisco Guerrero, a member of the European Parliament, also said, plant-based industry is helping environment, human health and animal welfare, and the EU must support it. Coconut milk has been extensively used in our cuisine. Even FSSAI recognises it in their documents. So the objection appears to be absurd. Moreover, the dairy industry is highly subsidized and funded by the government. Every year since the 1960s, the government spends thousands of crores just to maintain and support farmers. In the 2020 budget, the government of India made an ambitious plan to double milk processing by 2025. According to the 20th Livestock Census, as of 2019, the total number of cows and female buffaloes in India are nearly 25 crores. If we need to double milk production in the coming years, even through 100% sex sorted breeding, then we would need to feed and maintain about 500 million cows and buffaloes. This doesn't take into account the male counterparts. Now imagine the population by 2030 or 2040, all sharing space with a human population of over 140 crore people. Production double kaise karing? We are at saturation point already. So, you know, this is what we are doing. If the government is not going to be able to do it, we will be able to do it. 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 It's tax free. It's GST free. So, the government is going to be able to do it. It is going to be able to do it. It is going to be able to do it. Some already. Uh, established practices that 
prevent a plant-based tariff from being as accessible as it can be is, for example, that the 18% GST that we are being charged on our milks versus dairy being uh, uh, taxed at 0% GST. 19-20 साल हो गए अल कबीर को चले हुए. आज तक उसने एक पैसा नहीं दिया सरकार में. वो हर साल कहती है हम लॉस में चले गए. क्योंकि हमारा मास जो है वो खराब निकला. लेकिन कत्ल कितने कर चुके हैं? कम से कम 20 करोड़, 30 करोड़ भैंस, गाय, जो भी आप मान लें. तो आप किसके फायदे में कर रहे हैं? किसके? अगर बहुत पैसे मिल रहे होते तो मैं कहती कर लो. अगर बहुत सेहत बनती आपकी तो मैं कहती कर लो. अगर बहुत खुशी मिलती तो मैं कहती कर लो. लेकिन इनमें से क्या मिला आपको? कुछ भी नहीं. The dairy industry tried for 20 years to convince you that milk was good for you. It's a lie, but they tried anyway. And the sales were going like this. And then they tried Got Milk, and the sales are going like this. Got Milk doesn't even talk about the product. Matter of fact, it focuses on the absence of the product. In the West, every time the demand for milk decreases, the dairy industry employs various campaigns to promote milk sales. Similarly, in India, everyone wants to promote desi cow milk because it's A2 milk. However, the terms A1 and A2 have got nothing to do with native Indian breeds. The name A2 was coined by a New Zealand scientist who in his research observed that cows produce different types of milk. And based on the structure of a milk protein called casein, he classified milk into A1 and A2 milk. He believed cows that produced A2 milk were superior to A1. And with his discovery, he started a milk company in the year 2000 called the A2 Milk Company. Studies that show A2 milk as healthier than A1 also have disclaimers such as this study was funded by the A2 Milk Company Limited. It is merely a self-promoting business strategy. There is this claim that the native cow breeds in India secrete only A2 milk. According to Google Trends, this trend was picked up in the year 2017 the same year the cow protection bill was brought into the parliament. The dairy farmers are switching to hybrid cows and buffaloes for higher milk production and easy beef business. Perhaps the A2 marketing strategy was an attempt to protect native breeds that are becoming endangered. Now, you go to Bundel, there are thousands of cows. They get killed by the 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 cows. तालाबों में धक्का दे दिया जाता है, कोई पुरानी बिल्डिंग्स होती हैं या पंचायत की कोई जगह होती है, वहाँ उनको बिना खाने पीने के हर साल हजारों गायें भूखी प्यासी मार दी जा रही हैं। तो किसानों के पास है ही नहीं उनको खिलाने के लिए, कहाँ से सलूशन आएगा इसका? हमारी नेटिव स्पीशीज को आप मुझे से कुनहेटा की बात कीजिए या कुछ ऐसी स्पीशीज है जो बिल्कुल कम दूध देने वाली है जैसे नागौरी है राजस्थान की जिसके बैल बहुत अच्छे थे आप उनको क्यों कटने भेज दे रहे हैं बांग्लादेश इल्लीगली जा रही हैं ये सब पर वो सब कटने क्यों जा रहे हैं अगर बचाना है तो उन स्पीशीज को बचाने की जरूरत है जो दूध कम देती हैं आपको दूध पर से निर्भरता हटानी पड़ेगी ब्रीड बचाने के लिए इवन द डेयरी कॉरपोरेशन इन इंडिया क्वेश्चन इट्स वैलिडिटी फर्स्टली आई एम नॉट श्योर whether the claims of A1 and A2 milk can be borne out scientifically. There has been no research paper in peer publications globally. It's a belief that we have. It's a belief that you're propagated, a belief that you're touted. Since most of the dairy business comes from buffalo milk, soon companies began marketing buffalo milk as A2 milk. So overall, this has not helped the conservation of native breeds. Moving on, the industry claims majority of the income they generate goes directly to the dairy farmers. Anything between 75 to 80 percent of that 100 rupees goes back to the primary producer who has produced the milk. However, when I questioned farmers, the answers I got contradicted these claims. I don't think so. He has to check the chain of uh, chain of distributors in. because I am uh, giving dairy three uh, three years for last three years, and I always cry. कि भाई तुम लोग क्या कर रहे हो तुम लोग तो जान ले रहे हो हमारी मैं बोला मैं पढ़ी लिखी हूँ तो भी मुझे ऐसा कभी कभी फर्स्टेशन आया कि मैं भी जाऊँ संभाल नहीं पा रही हूँ अगर यू हैव डन अ रिसर्च एक सर्टेन मंथ में ना यू डू दैट रिसर्च आई एम सेइंग ना दो महीने या तीन महीने में साल में ना रे मिलकर रेट डाउन कर देते 
और दाने का रेट वही रखता है हजार रुपए अब बोलो ये गरीब लोग क्या करेंगे हमारा अर्निंग मेंबर था तो हम उधर से फंड लाके कर रहे हैं सर्वाइवल के लिए वो तो बेचते हैं फिर और वो ऐसी जगह पे बेचते हैं जो हम बिलीव ही नहीं कर सकते फिर फिर बोलते है गौ हत्या होती है अरे तुम लोग ने ही हमें मजबूर किया है ऐसे लोगो को बेचने के लिए This is the situation of dairy farmers in India, despite receiving subsidies from the governments for decades. With a non-existing profit margin, how can they look after the well-being of the animals? Most dairy farms are not well maintained and have no soft flooring or sufficient space for movement. They aren't properly ventilated and their hygiene is poor. During my visits to dairy farms, I happened to meet an artificial insemination inspector who was present at the dairy farm to impregnate animals. I understand that there are 10-15 kilometers around us, the farmers are giving the farmers information, like this, like this, like this. They come to the heat, 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 they come to the heat. Professionally, we do that. We don't do anything else. We put three or four semen every day. It doesn't mean that it's not the same way. 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 Because they have a lot of work. All of them are not available in the local area. How do children grow up? The dairy industry in Hindustan is now नेचुरल तरीके से कोई मेटिंग अलाउ करती नहीं है यानी कि सांड आए मेट करे महिला के साथ खत्म वो नहीं हो, होता है अब ये सीमन लेते हैं सांडों से और सीमन डालते हैं गाय के अंदर अब सीमन लेने के लिए क्या होता है सांड को रखा जाता है एक जगह और पाँच साल से लेकर के दस साल में वही सांड को बांधा जाता है पूरे दिन एक ही जगह में बंधा है नो एक्सरसाइज नथिंग लेकिन उसको चार दफ़ा हफ्ते में ले जाते हैं बाहर और उसके एनस में एक बिजली का रॉड डालते हैं और उसको बिजली का इतना तगड़ा शॉक देते हैं कि उसका सीमन भी निकल आता है लेकिन वो गिर जाता है उसके पूरी ट्रेम्बलिंग हो जाती है और बेहोश हो जाता है चार दिन के लिए हफ्ते में हर रोज़ दो दफ़ा किया जाता है अब जो सीमन ली जाती है वो सीमन का कोई चेक भी नहीं करते हैं कि कौन सी इसमें बीमारियां हैं लेकिन वो सीमन चला जाता है गाय के अंदर अब जो गाय के अंदर सीमन डालने का जो प्रोसेस है वो बहुत ही डेलिकेट होता है क्योंकि आप एक मशीन लेकर के अंदर सुई डालते हैं जैसे औरत को जब इम्प्रेगनेट करना होता है तो आई बहुत तकलीफ़ वाली चीज़ होती है लेकिन यहाँ उन्होंने ऐसे लोगों को रखे हैं जो दो हफ्ते की ट्रेनिंग मिलती है और वो भी बेरोज़गार किसी इंसान जो लिखा पढ़ा नहीं है उसको दो हफ्ते की ट्रेनिंग देते हैं और फिर वो किट पकड़ाते हैं और कहते हैं कि जाओ इंसेमिनेटर बन जाओ वो अक्सर जब गाय के अंदर सीमेंट डालते हैं तो यूट्रस को फाड़ देते हैं अब फटी हुई यूट्रस के साथ वो गाय या तो मरेगी या तो उसका अबॉर्शन होगा या तो प्रेगनेंट होगी नहीं आपको मालूम है कि हमारा रेट ऑफ सक्सेस क्या है हिंदुस्तान में 1800 करोड़ रुपए इस पर खर्चा किया गया है रेट ऑफ सक्सेस 2 परसेंट तो ये वो वाईला द जेवरासी कल इधर नाला आज कहाँ है यंदा वो एक कोरलम ओटूर में नहीं लाया आज पैसे रहते नहीं लाया आज नाला आज वैले ही नमस्ते जग उठा कर रहे हैं दिन आप अगर जिंदगी चिपक गए हैं तो मार्ट की सही गुड़िया आज व why was such an invasive procedure carried out by people without professional qualifications? Why do veterinary doctors not do it? We have 33 veterinary colleges. This is probably the most bad in the world. And only one thing is how to make a guy to a girl. Just. And nothing. You know, guy is our mother, I don't have anything else. This is the concept. सबसे बड़ा एम्प्लॉयर जो है वेटनेरियंस का वो है पशुपालन विभाग पशुपालन विभाग जो है उसका मतलब ये नहीं है कि पशुओं की आ, सेवा करने का विभाग 
वो है पशुओं के उत्पादन करने का विभाग कैसे अंडा बढ़ाया जाए कैसे दूध बढ़ाया जाए कैसे लेदर बढ़ाया जाए कैसे मीट बढ़ाया जाए कैसे ऊन बढ़ाया जाए इत्यादि के बारे में काम करने का विभाग इंसेमिनेशन कॉलेजेस तो या तो मगर इसका इलाज क्या है इसका इलाज केवल एक है कि अगर आपके पास कोई पैसा है तो आप वेटनरी कॉलेज शुरू क्यों नहीं करते एक वक्त था कि हर लॉयर लीग क्या बोलते हैं लॉ कॉलेज घटिया से घटिया होता था डेढ़ सौ रुपये में आप डिग्री अपना खरीद लो फिर बेंगलोर लॉ कॉलेज शुरू हुआ और वो इंटरनेशनल स्टैंडर्ड का था दो साल के अंदर अंदर हर लॉ कॉलेज हिंदुस्तान में इतना अच्छा बन गया कि आज कोई खराब कॉलेज है ही नहीं तो एक वेटनरी कॉलेज अगर शुरू हो जाए जो इंटरनेशनल स्टैंडर्ड्स का है तो आप देखेंगे बाकियों को करना ही पड़ेगा So what are the Hindu religious communities doing to put a stop to this animal abuse that is associated with dairy production? अगर आप पूछेंगे क्या इस्कॉन में कहीं भी डेयरी नहीं यूज होता तो मैं कहूँगा कि होता है इस्कॉन के लिए ये नियम नहीं है कि हम दूध नहीं बेच सकते तो मुझे ऐसा गाय का दूध दीजिए आप अवेलेबल कीजिए जिसमें अहिंसा के माध्यम से दूध मिला हो और उस गाय को कोई कष्ट नहीं हुआ हो उसके लिए आपको क्या करना होगा आपको गौशालाएं खोलनी पड़ेगी आपको वहां पर उन गायों को अच्छे से रखना होगा और फिर उस दूध को आप लोगों की तरफ पहुंचाइए तो लेंगे जरूर लेकिन सब लोग ऐसा नहीं कर सकते ना क्योंकि मैं मुंबई में तो सब लोग बादाम का दूध भी नहीं ले सकते ना हाँ उसे कहिएगा मैं आपको ऐसी गाय का दूध देता हूँ जो शुद्ध है और शाकाहारी और जो अहिंसा है वो मानेंगे मगर वो आप अवेलेबल कीजिए ना लेकिन जब तक हम लेकिन भगवान को वो भी पसंद नहीं है कि जो दूध क्रूरता से आ रहे उसका स्वीकार नहीं करना है हाँ। तो वही भावना से ये भी देना आ, सही नहीं है आप जिस कार्य में जुटे हैं ना आप उसे चालू रखिए आपका विचार बहुत उच्च कोटि का है मैं आपको सिर्फ सजेशन दे रहा था कि जो ज्यादा लोग मानेंगे नहीं इसको जो दूध चढ़ाने की प्रथा भी है कहाँ से आ रही है थोड़ा समझिएगा अहंकार का घटना और खत्म हो जाना आखिरी लक्ष्य होता है आध्यात्मिक साधना का स्पिरिचुअलिटी इसीलिए होती है ताकि आपके भीतर जो एक आपका फॉल्स सेंटर बैठा हुआ है ना जो आपकी सारी तकलीफ का कारण है वो खत्म हो सके वो फॉल्स सेंटर एग्जिस्ट करता है अटैचमेंट से किस चीज़ से वो अटैच होता है जिस चीज़ को वो कीमती वैल्यूएबल समझता है एक जमाना था जब इंसान के पास सबसे बड़ा धन पशुधन होता था और पशुधन में भी दूध सबसे बड़ा उसको अमृत बोलते थे क्यों सबसे बड़ी चीज़ होती थी क्योंकि और कुछ था ही नहीं और कुछ था ही नहीं तो आपको लगता था आपके पास जो सबसे कीमती चीज़ है क्या है दूध तो आप कहते थे कि ये जो दूध है मेरे यही मेरे लिए सबसे कीमती चीज़ है तो मेरी जो ईगो है उसके लिए सबसे वैल्यूएबल चीज़ क्या है तो मुझे अगर त्याग करना है या बलिदान करना है या समर्पण करना है या कुर्बानी देनी है तो मैं किस चीज़ की दूंगा दूध की दूंगा तो बात दूध की नहीं है बात उस चीज़ की है जो आपको आज सबसे ज़्यादा कीमती लगती है आपको वो जाके चढ़ानी है भगवान को आपको दूध थोड़ी चढ़ाना है गाय का गाय परेशान हो रही है कि मेरा दूध ले जाके वहाँ गाय को चढ़ा दिया भाई आप वो चीज़ चढ़ाओ जो आपके लिए कीमती है आपने वो चीज़ चढ़ा दी जो बछड़े के लिए कीमती है आप बछड़े हो क्या आपके लिए कीमती है आपके घर में जो आपके शेयर्स के कागजात रखे हैं आपकी जो एफडी रखी है आपकी बीवी के गहने आपकी आपकी ज़मीन के कागज हम्म आपकी प्रसिद्धि और आपकी एम्बिशंस ये सब आप सबसे ज़्यादा वैल्यू देते हो ना इनको ये जाकर के भगवान जी को अर्पित करो इनका समर्पण करना होता है जो कृष्ण ये सोचता है कि मेरे घर में आने वाला दूध पहले मुझे मिलना चाहिए फिर मथुरा में बिकने के लिए जाना चाहिए 
उसी कृष्ण ने यह भी तो सोचा होगा कि जिस गाय का हम दूध निकाल रहे हैं उसके बच्चे को वो पहला मिलना चाहिए बाद में हम तक आना चाहिए उसके पहले क्या होता था कि वो गाय के बछड़े को कहीं जाके कोने में बांध के रखते थे जबरदस्ती उसको दूध पीने नहीं देते थे पहले पूरे गाय का दूध जितना बेचने के लिए चाहिए उतना निकालने के बाद फिर बछड़े को छोड़ा जाता था तो कृष्ण ने यह भी चेंज किया उन्होंने ये भी एक्टिविज्म किया उन्होंने कहा नहीं गाय के दूध पे पहला अधिकार उस गाय के बच्चे का है तो आप पहले बच्चे को गाय के पास छोड़ दो उसको चाहिए जितना अपनी माँ का दूध पीने दो और उसका दूध पी के होने के बाद में हम दूध निकालेंगे इवन डॉगिंग do unto others as you would have them do unto you just like i would not like to be bound i would not like not like to be exploited i would not like my child to be taken away so that you can use some part of me it's really it's really it's not a very complicated thing aise koi cheez nahi hai jisko hum ahimsa mil bol sakte koi bhi gaay ka doodh lene mein aapko uske bachde ko bhooka rakhna padega gaay ek machine nahi hai wo maa ki tarah agar mera main अपने बच्चे को पिला रही हूँ दूध तो मेरे थनों में उतना ही दूध आएगा जितना मेरे बच्चे को को ज़रूरत पड़े उसी तरीके से गाय के थनों में उतना ही दूध आएगा जितना उसके बच्चे की ज़रूरत है अब बच्चे बच्चे को चाहिए तीन किलो चार किलो लेकिन आप तीन किलो चार किलो निकाल करके उसको एक पाव दूध देते वो भूखा भूखा जो लड़की है वो भूख से जूझती रहे क्योंकि पूरे दिन बांधी रहती है माँ के पास तो जाने देते नहीं है इन मन को कोई मन को मन मन को मन से अट अभी मन मन को तीन चुप्त मन धर्म अंदक जीवन चेरा शिवरात्रि वे अंदर अद स्टैल सो वाले इपड़ पाल इवे मन भक्ति तग्पोदा पाल पैन बंदे शिव की नील चाल भक्ति तो आई पग पाल नील पत्न पेट चाल अवे पाल वाला कृष्ण हिमसेल सैज इन द भगवद गीता इफ वन ऑफर्स मी वित् लव एंड डिवोशन अ लीफ अ फ्ला अ फ्रूट और ईवन वाटर ई विल एक्सैप्ट इट कृष्ण ने वर् आस्ट हिस डिवोटी टू ऑफर इन मिल पीपल हव अवर डू इट अवट आफ डिवोशन while overlooking the cruelty in the dairy practice yatha raja tatha praja yad bhavan tad bhavati so how we are we think that way if krishna was in today's world in my world krishna would not have been stealing or krishna would not have been drinking milk see it is our thinking our actions shape everything so i have a god here he is perfectly vegan I don't offer any animal products to my God. I pray, I uh, practice uh, meditation, I rituals, but no animals required. See, when we are a type, particular type, we want to see the same thing in others. If you are eating meat, we offer to others. I will feed you also. If I was eating meat, I would have fed you meat. I am not eating meat. I didn't feed you meat. Same way, we see the same qualities in God. The way we are. We see the same thing. We drink milk. We offer to good uh, same thing to God, or we think that God drinks milk. So my Krishna doesn't drink milk. My Rama doesn't drink milk. So it's my thinking. It's all in my mind. So I pray uh, to a Krishna who is blemishless. Another justification people use for extracting milk from cows was that calves died by consuming excess milk. Is it true that if the calf drinks all the milk, uh, the calf will die? No, calf won't drink more than necessary. Till its st- stomach is full, it will drink. And then once its stomach is full, it will go and sleep, go play around, whatever, happy. I don't think it is right. How, how can the calf die because of drink, drinking too much milk? I don't know. Who has said that? Everyone. I don't think it is right when they say that if ca- a calf drinks all the milk or whatever it is allowed to, then it will die. That is the wrong thing. So That is they are not keeping the calf healthy. उसकी मम्मी वहाँ पे है फ्रूटी नाम रखा हुआ है मैंने उसकी उसका बच्चा ये है 
ये छः महीने का बच्चा है इसको माँ का दूध मिला है शुरू से तो उसकी हेल्थ देखिए आप और यहाँ पे सुबह शाम खाना मिलता है और माँ का दूध बहुत जरूरी होता है तो वो मिला है इसको तो वो हेल्थी है अच्छा है कितने महीने तो तो माँ का दूध माँ का दूध तो अभी मेरे सामने रियलिटी तो ये है कि छः सात महीने से तो मैं देख रहा हूँ पीते हुए तो अभी पता लगेगा कि कब तक वो पिएगा तो फिर मुझे आइडिया हो जाएगा इसलिए बहुत हेल्दी है हाँ छ महीने में कुछ लोग ऐसा बोल रहा है कि अगर माँ का दूध ज्यादा पिया तो वो मौसम साग के मरेगा ये सब नहीं नहीं ऐसा कुछ नहीं है मैं उसको देख के आ रहा हूँ ये शुरू से दूध पी रहा है मम्मी का दूध पी रहा है और वो बच्चा भी पी रहा है देखो वो गाय के भी कुछ थन में प्रॉब्लम हो गई है तो वो बच्चा भी पी रहा है दूध छोटे बच्चे हैं दो तीन बच्चे हैं आ, तो वो दूध पी रहे हैं आराम से हेल्थी हैं कोई दिक्कत नहीं तो आप कभी खींचते नहीं 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 बस बस बच्चे ही पीता है द अमाउंट ऑफ मिल्क गौशाला प्रोड्यूस एंड सेल इज इनसिग्निफिकेंट एंड डजेंट कवर दीडेड फॉर मेंस In the genuine gaushalas that I visited, calves consumed most of the milk, and the people who ran these gaushalas barely consumed any. Even the prasadam which I ate at the gaushala was vegan. There was no ghee, milk, or curd that was being used. Even the dessert was prepared using coconut milk. What about the differences in the way we treat cows and buffaloes? Many people told me that buffaloes are not smart. But the rescuers tell a different story. It's amazing how clever they are. So they know what not to eat and know what to eat. This knowledge has been passed over generation to generation. They're very, very intelligent. And uh, some of the lead bulls, they will also know uh, when the fruiting tree is in season, where it is. Could be five miles away. So he knows now is the time to go there. He knows that house gives me two rotis. That one will throw water on me. So they are that intelligent, and uh, I've even seen a bull, uh, a huge herd led by a stray herd led by a bull, and uh, the garden gate was a little bit open, and he actually went in by himself, inspected the garden. He went round, then he went back and he signalled for all the rest to come in. So, you know, the big bull will actually risk his life. For his herd, and it's the same with the uh, poisonous plants; uh, they will know which ones not to eat. So amazingly, we have uh, 55 cows and one buffalo, and uh, Angel Yamuna here has proved that she is more intelligent than her fellow bovines. She's actually cleverer than the cows uh, because she is the only one that can open this gate. आपे मेपे मेपेदे गंगा <laughs> 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 मुद्दा उठाना पड़ेगा जितने भी व्यर्थ के मुद्दे होते हैं वो लोगों के दिमाग में घुसे हुए हैं ये मुद्दा ही नहीं बनता कभी आप अखबार को उठाइए उसमें सारे वो मुद्दे भरे होते हैं जो आदमी के दिमाग को खराब करें ठीक है ना 30-40 प्रतिशत स्पेस तो ग्लैमर वर्ल्ड ने ले रखा होता है ले रखा होता है कि नहीं आप किसी आ, मीडिया साइट पर चले जाइए न्यूज़ वेबसाइट पर चले जाइए या अखबार उठा लीजिए या कुछ कर लीजिए अभी अगर आपका वीकेंड चल रहा है आप देख लीजिए कि आपको मीडिया किस तरह की खबरों से न्यूज़ से और सबसे महत्वपूर्ण बात टॉपिक्स मुद्दों से बॉम्बार्ड कर रहा है 
तो आपके दिमाग में दुनिया भर के फिजूल मुद्दे डाले जा रहे हैं इस बात की ओर कोई आपका ध्यान ही नहीं खींच रहा कि तुम खा क्या रहे हो इस बात को छोड़ दिया गया है कि ये तो सबका अपना निजी मसला है पर्सनल मैटर ये बताना पड़ेगा कि ये निजी बात नहीं है पहली बात तो अगर निजी बात मानो भी तो तुम्हें पता होना चाहिए कि वो तुम खा रहे हो वो तुम्हारे शरीर को तबाह कर देगा लेकिन तबाह करे ना करे ये निजी बात नहीं है ये जो तुमने जिस किसी को मार दिया और खा रहे हो निजी बात इसलिए नहीं है क्योंकि इसमें उसकी ज़िंदगी का भी सवाल है पहली बात दूसरी बात जो तुम खा रहे हो वो पूरी दुनिया को बर्बाद कर रहा है आज ठीक वैसे जैसे किसी ने अपने घर में डीजल जनरेटर सेट लगा रखा हो जो जबरदस्त धुआं फेंक रहा हो क्या ये उसकी निजी बात रह गई आपके पड़ोसी ने अपने घर में एक डीजी सेट लगा रखा है और वो जबरदस्त रूप से काला धुआं फेंकता है ठीक है क्या ये उसका पर्सनल मैटर है नहीं है ना क्योंकि वो जो कर रहा है पूरी दुनिया को तबाह कर रहा है इसी तरह से आज कोई अगर मांस खा रहा है जानवर को काट रहा है तो ये उसका पर्सनल मैटर नहीं है दूसरों का हक है आपत्ति करने का मैं ज़ोर ज़बरदस्ती की बात नहीं कर रहा पर हमें इतना तो अपना फ़र्ज निभाना पड़ेगा कि उसको पकड़ें कहें कि सुनो भाई एक बहुत ज़रूरी मुद्दा है जिस पर तुम्हें ध्यान देना होगा तो ये इसमें इन्फॉर्मेशन एक्टिविज़म चाहिए अभी तो जब तक मैं 45 साल की हुई तब तक सारी की सारी बीमारियां हो गई थी डायबिटीज़ ब्लड प्रेशर हाइपोथेरोडिज़म घुटने में दर्द होता था मैं 100 मीटर भी नहीं चल सकती थी यहाँ तक कि कभी कभी मैं रात को जब प्रे करती थी तो सोचती थी कि मैं कल सुबह उठूँ ही नहीं भगवान से कहती थी मुझे कल सुबह उठना ही नहीं है तो नींद में ही मैं मर जाऊँ तो ये सामना नहीं करना पड़ेगा मुझे इन बीमारियों का मैंने आयुर्वेदा ट्राई किया होम्योपैथी ट्राई की एलोपैथी तो बहुत सारी ट्राई की लेकिन कुछ भी काम नहीं आया और फिर मुझे एक डॉक्टर ने हेल्दी वीगन खाना खाने को कहा उसके साथ एक महीने के अंदर अंदर मेरा डायबिटीज़ की दवाइयाँ बंद हो गई नॉर्मल हो गया डायबिटीज़ और तीन चार महीने में तो ब्लड प्रेशर की भी दवाई बंद हो गई और हाइपोथायरोडिज़म की दवाई भी छः महीने में बंद हो गई और वेट लॉस भी हुआ 100 किलो के करीब से आज मैं पैंसठ किलो की हो गई हूँ तो कभी कभी मुझे लगता है कि काश हमारे जो डॉक्टर्स हैं उनको इस चीज़ के बारे में पता हो और सारे डॉक्टर अगर लोगों को ये ट्रीटमेंट बताएं कि सही खाना खाने से हेल्दी वीगन खाना खाने से हम अपनी सारी बीमारियाँ दूर कर सकते हैं तो कितना अच्छा हो जाए Mayavi ji is 60 years old today. She wakes up at 5 a.m. every day and on average she prepares over 20 vegan meals a day for people like her in Mumbai who want to reverse lifestyle diseases. As a doctor myself, I was never taught in my education about the power of food in curing lifestyle diseases. To discuss the same, I asked doctors and professionals from various backgrounds about the influence of animal products on health and society. A lifestyle disease just means a disease that you got from your lifestyle, and that really means food uh, for the most part. Now, here in America, people start eating meat as soon as they get up in the morning. They have sausage, they have bacon, or they might have eggs and dairy products. And animal products have animal fat, which causes your body to produce cholesterol. And the animal products contain cholesterol itself. What's the problem? As your cholesterol level builds up in your blood, your arteries start to narrow, and that can lead to heart attacks, to stroke, to kidney problems, and even to dementia. But that's just the beginning. Apart from the heart problems and the the blood vessel problems, animal products are linked to cancer, to diabetes, to obesity, and to many other conditions. So we're better off excluding the animal products. From our diet. If you put the wrong fuel in the car, for example, if you have a petrol car and you put in diesel, it won't work. But our body adapts, and that's why we get away with it for so long. But truly, everyone has diseases. Even young children, when they're given milk, they get colds and coughs and ear infections and fevers, which need not ever happen, because milk is mucus forming. So all the way from, you know. Problems of young age to asthma, to uh, rheumatoid arthritis or 
osteoarthritis and even heart disease and diabetes all these lifestyle diseases can be prevented just by eating healthy mere paas sabhi prakar ke patients aate hain main dekhti hu ki main sabse pehle unka blood टेस्ट करवाती हूँ उसमें हमेशा विटामिन डी विटामिन बी ट्वेल्व हमेशा टेस्ट करवाती हूँ तो मैंने देखा है कि नॉन वेजिटेरियन में भी यही विटामिन की डेफिशिएंसी है वेजिटेरियन में भी है और वीगन में भी होती है तो ये एक यूनिक वीगन का प्रॉब्लम नहीं है वेल इट्स इम्पोर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट यू डू नीड बी ट्वेल्व फॉर हेल्थी नर्व एंड हेल्थी ब्लड इट्स असेंशल बट इट्स नॉट मेड बाई एनिमल्स और प्लांट्स Vitamin B12 is actually made by bacteria. And many people speculate that before the advent of modern hygiene, the traces of bacteria that were in the soil or on plants or maybe even on our fingers or in our mouths would give us the tiny trace of B12 that we need. Whether that was ever true, it's not really true today because modern hygiene would have eliminated that. Now, meat eaters will get some vitamin B12 because the bacteria in the gut of a cow for example or a chicken will make some B12 and so that gets into the meat or it gets into the milk however even they can run low because it's often hard for them to absorb B12 from those sources so the best source really is a supplement main dekhti hu ke rural area mein aap jaate hain gaon mein jaate hain तो वहाँ विटामिन बी ट्वेल्व की डेफिशिएंसी नहीं दिखती है क्योंकि लोग मिट्टी के साथ जुड़े हुए हैं अगर मिट्टी है सूर्य प्रकाश है तो आपको ये डेफिशिएंसी नहीं आएगी ये अर्बन फिनोमिना है आप शहरों में रहते हैं अंदर बैठे रहते हैं सूर्य के प्रकाश में बाहर नहीं निकलते आप गोगल्स डाल देते हैं आप बार बार हाथ धोते हैं आपका सोइल का कोई कॉन्टेक्ट नहीं है तो ये होता है तो ये अक्रोस दोर्ड सभी में है वीगन्स में भी है anything that is too much gets toxic even if it is nectar that can turn toxic so ayurveda says adhikam amritam visham which means that if you use something too much then it becomes toxic to your body the most important aspect in life is to survive is to keep yourself alive in order to achieve dharma artha kama and moksha the idea of ayurveda we need to understand first ayurveda is a book of knowledge Uh, which we can uh, get informed and use that information in order to prevent uh, diseases or to regain health basically curative so from uh, grass to milk or whatever which is available is explained basically the quality of that is explained and uh, the context or situation which is good also being explained in ayurveda so our duty is only to understand that information and use it wisely on the proper context gokshiram mathuram shidam guru snigdham rasayanam brahmanam stanyagrith balyam dhibanam vadanut so these qualities are explained in ayurveda what is milk and what are the functions of milk so for example it tells that milk is sweet milk is cooling in quality milk is heavy milk is not very easy to digest milk is rejuvenative milk is toning so when we take milk uh, without considering this qualities if we use milk in our body that is not at all good so milk is not a substance which looks white or we get from the cow and good for health not like that there are many different qualities as explained which we need to understand before we think of consuming milk if you don't consider this points as milk is cooling milk is heavy and milk is not very easy to digest a person who doesn't know about this and he consumes this who is not eligible to drink milk that definitely creates irritations or intolerance or indigestions uh, at least 25% medications will have dairy and animal products uh, but it is not actually essential to do that because those days they believed that you need fatty acids as a vehicle to take the essential alkaloids of medicine so that is why they used milk in this scenario in our scenario we can always use coconut oil or any other you know any other oily substance any other fatty acids ghee banti thi doodh se aur wo ghee ko istemal kiya jata tha um havano mein 
लेकिन इस तरीके का डेयरी जो शुरू हुआ ये शुरू हुआ अंग्रेज़ों के ही ज़माने में क्योंकि वो दूध पीते थे अपने देश में और उनसे पचता है तो वह ले आए हिंदुस्तान में और हम लोगों ने फिर बढ़ा चढ़ा करके डेयरी शुरू किए नहीं तो डेयरीज कभी हिंदुस्तान में होते ही नहीं थे तबेले होते ही नहीं थे अब हर बच्चा जब चिल्लाता है कि माँ मुझे दूध नहीं चाहिए नहीं चाहिए तो हम क्या करते हैं पापा को आने दो वो देख लेगा पिक्चर नहीं दूंगे मैं फल नहीं दूंगी अच्छा ऐसे कर लो तुम पहले दूध पी लो फिर चॉकलेट खाएंगे इट हैज़ बिकम पावर प्ले हमें दूध से कोई मतलब नहीं है हमें दिखाना है बच्चे को कि हम कौन हैं हम उनके माँ बाप हैं और ये बच्चे हैं और अगर हम बहुत ही आ, सोचते हैं तो हम इस दूध को छुपा देते हैं कभी उसमें बोनबीटा डाल दिया कभी चॉकलेट डाल दिया कभी कुछ डाल दिया कभी चीनी डाल दी ताकि उसका टेस्ट छुपा दे फिर भी बच्चा इतना रोता है को एक बच्चा मुझे दिखाइए जो खुशी खुशी जाता है दूध पीने वन परसेंट लेस देन वन परसेंट कार्डिवोरस एनिमल्स हो या हबी वोरस एनिमल्स हो एक पॉइंट के बाद बच्चा दूध पीना ही बंद कर देता है मतलब शेर का भी बच्चा जब कुछ महीने का हो जाता है फाइव सिक्स मंथ्स का हो जाता है तो माँ वो शेर नहीं उसका उसके लिए हंट करके वो एनिमल लाती है वो एनिमल खाता है वो मीट खाता है वो दूध नहीं पीता है वेन आई वॉज बॉर्न इन बेबी माई बॉडी विल बी ए वेरी स्मॉल आई वॉन्ट टू मेक इट इट हैव टू बिकम ए बिग वन माई मदर मिल्क विल हेल्प मी टू बिकम ए बिग वन इट इज ऑल बिग राइट नाउ इट इज सेटल्ड इट्स इनाफ आफ्टर दैट वी आर ड्रिंकिंग अ काउ मिल्क द काउ मिल्क इज ऑल्सो हैविंग द सेम प्रॉपर्टी इट वॉन्ट टू मेक इज काफ स्मॉल किडनी टू बिग किडनी स्मॉल हार्ट टू बिग हार्ट स्मॉल लिवर टू बिग लिवर all things that the cow milk will also do the same thing to the calf so now we are drinking the milk of cow, cow milk the cow milk the same treatment it will give to us you know after growing all my kidney sizes all organs are grown well it is enough even though i am taking a dosage of medicines like uh, making it some more big when it starts getting a little slightly big it will happen failures it will become a kidney failure it will become a liver failure heart failure so right size it have to be in a right size ye bachpan se ekdam birth se hi nahi khati hai ye mother's milk ke baad turant isko maine soy milk introduce kiya aur fir jaise jo normal khana ek adult khata hai all types of grains jitna bhi grains hai cereals hai sabzi hai phal hai नट्स सीड्स सब कुछ खाती है तो ये लोग अब मतलब ये शायद ऑलमोस्ट फाइव टू सिक्स इयर्स से ये वीजन है और ये एकदम बर्थ से है लोग बोलते हैं कि मिल्क में प्राइमरीली प्रोटीन है और कैल्शियम है और ये दो चीज बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है किसी भी ह्यूमन के ग्रोथ के लिए या किसी भी ह्यूमन के वेलबींग के लिए तो मैं बोलता हूँ कि प्रोटीन और कैल्शियम शाकाहारी वर्ल्ड में वनस्पति वर्ल्ड में बहुत अवेलेबल है द गाइस हु वेयर क्वाइट इनटू फिटनेस एंड दे वांटेड टू बिल्ड मसल दे वुड गो टू द ट्रेनर एंड आस्क दैट गाय हु इज लिफ्टिंग वेट्स देयर लाइक कैन आई नो व्हाट डज ही ईट राइट एंड देन ही वुड से लाइक माय ट्रेनर वुड से जस्ट गो आस्क हिम ही इज वेरी फ्रेंडली देन दे वुड कम टू मी एंड दे वुड आस्क मी एंड व्हेन आई टेल देम आई एम वीगन दे वुड बी शेल शॉक बिकॉज़ the image they have when the amount of weights that i used to lift and you know my musculature all of that they would think that like one arm i'm lifting a dumbbell other arm i'm eating a chicken leg like, or something like that right so even among fitness professionals there is that myth that you have to eat non veg or you have to have some amount of animal product in order to build muscle अगर मैं टिपिकल डाइट लूँ जो मैं नॉर्मली फॉलो करता आ रहा हूँ पिछले दस सालों में तो फॉर एग्जांपल सुबह को जो भी मेरे घर पे बनता है जैसे समझो टिपिकल गुजराती घर में ब्रेकफास्ट में पोहा बनता है या उपमा बनता है या इडली बनती है या या बेसन के का चिल्ला बनता है तो यही सब आइटम मैं खाता हूँ ऑल मैं करता हूँ ना कि मैं इसको थोड़ा स्मार्टली खाता हूँ जैसे अगर समझो मैं पोहा खा रहा हूँ ना तो मैं पोहा के ऊपर पीनट्स डाल देता हूँ मैं पोहा के ऊपर स्प्राउट्स डाल देता हूँ ऐसा कोई पोहा हेल्दी मील ही है बट अगर पोहा में आपने पीनट्स और थोड़े स्प्राउट्स डाल दिए तो वो थोड़ा वेल बैलेंस मील हो जाता है 
कि पोहा इज प्राइमरली कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स तो अगर आपने उसमें पीनट्स और स्प्राउट्स डाला तो देर विल बी हेल्दी फैट्स एंड देर विल ऑल्सो बी इनफ प्रोटीन तो एक प्रॉपर कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ एक हेल्दी मील बन गया विदाउट इंक्रीजिंग द कॉस्ट ठीक है तो मैं एक इंसिडेंट जानता हूँ कि जहाँ पे एक व्यक्ति ने एक दिन के बछड़े के साथ बलात्कार किया था किस लिए शायद क्योंकि वो ना एक चीज़ देख देख के उनके लिए नॉर्मल हो गया कि ये पैदा हुआ है अब इसको दूध नहीं देना है या अब इसको थोड़े दिन धूप में बांधना और ये मर जाएगा वो उनके लिए एक जीव है ही नहीं तो डेयरी जो वहाँ पर जो केयर टेकर्स होते हैं उनको भी कोई बहुत अच्छी सुविधा मिल नहीं रही होती है वहाँ पर वो क्या होता है ज़्यादातर नीचे गाय भैंसे हैं तो वो ऊपर कहीं सो जाते हैं कई बार उनके ऊपर डबल वो बना रखा होता है कहीं पे ऐसा नहीं होता तो वो साइड में कहीं उनके छोटे कमरे पर तो बहुत अच्छी कंडीशन में वो लोग भी नहीं रहते आई डू बिलीव दैट सच काइंड ऑफ वर्क डज इम्पैक्ट योर साइकोलॉजिकल वेलबींग डेफिनेटली इन द लॉन्ग रन इट्स ब्लड इट्स गोर इट्स टॉर्चर हाउ मच विल अ पर्सन डी सेंसिटाइज दम टू दिस आई डू फील दैट सच काइंड ऑफ work would affect people socially and also have an impact on their family life lot of psychopathologies are associated with it they start with animal torture animal cruelty this indian word shakahari or sasyahari we say originally it is the same vegan vegan means eating plant food but in present form it has origin about 200 years ago In 1830s, uh, this uh, word vegetarian was founded. Vegetarian came from vegetable diet. Uh, then vegetarian society was started in England. Uh, it went on. Uh, initially, it was uh, eating only plant food, vegan food. And later, when the office bearers changed, the definition also changed. Animal milk and uh, eggs were also included as vegetarian food. Later, some people. Uh, didn't agree for this definition of vegetarianism which includes animal products like milk and eggs and honey also so these people went away from the vegetarian society and formed a separate group called dairy free vegetarians later they wanted a separate identity for that they wanted a new term new definition everything came into place slowly after uh, one after another so vegan was uh, derived from the word vegetarian taking first three letters and last two letters so in uh, 2019 october fssai has released a document saying that your milk is largely safe mm. and they have given a brief state wise data and all that saying that the amount of adulteration is a very small percentage whereas your report which came few months later it says that nearly 79% is adulterated so what could be the reason for this uh, dispute both are right what they are saying what is their statement Your it is milk safe is largely safe largely safe they are not saying it is not adulterated they are saying it is largely safe we are saying it is adulterated our definition is if you add anything more if i add water to it then according to us it is adulterated we are not checking whether it is safe or unsafe we are saying it is adulterated adulterated is adulterated whether it is safe or not is an next parameter that fssa say we look into the matter so they are not saying it is not adulterated if you look at that words they are all very smart guys all ias officers they are not fools they have studied they know how to answer to the public at the same time they don't want to scare the public also so they say it is largely safe they are not saying it is unadulterated they never say that they say it is safe and that is a fact if you don't get sick and all these adulterated things no immediately are not going to die supposing there is i am adding say some dirty water which contains heavy metals contaminants are you going to die immediately no it is going to get accumulated in your body because the milk is taken when you are a small child from the time you are a child you keep on consuming after 30 40 years this will re- give some reactions on your body but you will never correlate it to the adulteration from milk you will say nasib ka khel hai or maybe you are sick or some other reason you may say heredity you may say gene you may say so many other things or finally nothing is there you can say pollution or farmers are burning parali so there is pollution and because of which i got this disease you will never come to know because you don't correlate it because it doesn't happen every it's a slow poison it goes over you over a period of time that is the reason why you can't directly correlate it to that but you can't say this is not the reason 
Yes, um, industry <laughs> plays an enormous role, I'm sorry to say, in a couple of ways. Um, the dairy industry here in the United States actually pays for continuing medical education for doctors, telling them, for example, how lactose intolerant patients can manage to drink cow's milk, even though they would otherwise get sick from it. Yes, I know it sounds surprising to think that the dairy industry is paying to educate doctors, but they are. They spend thousands and thousands and thousands of, doc uh, of dollars on courses. They pay off medical organizations to accredit them, and that's been a big problem that we have been trying to stop. But there's more to it than that. The drug industry, pharmaceuticals, while they play a really important role in making life-saving medicines, they also control a lot of what doctors are taught. So when we are talking about, say, diabetes, many doctors don't really know that much about how a diet change can tackle the causes of diabetes. But on the other hand, they know about metformin, and they know about insulin, and they know about long-acting and bol bolus insulins, and they can recite all the pharmaceutical products. Um, but uh, that's really because, unfortunately, the marketing has pushed them in that direction. Today, if you read the ingredient list in the ingredient list, there is milk, milk powder. Now, what is potato chips in milk powder? But it's because it's addictive. If you put it in the milk, you can put it in the milk every time. But why is it such a thing in the milk? जो माँ के दूध में भी जो केसीन है, उसमें केसो मॉर्फिन होता ही है, लेकिन ये इसलिए ताकि बच्चा बार-बार दूध पिए और उसको एडिक्शन जैसे हो जाए और फिर उसको उससे बढ़े, अच्छी तरह उसका न्यूट्रिशन मिले उसको। तो इसलिए कुदरत ने ये उसमें रखा है, लेकिन वो जब दूध पीना बंद कर दे उसके बाद उसको दूध की कोई जरूरत नहीं है ये चिप्स में और और अनेक नाश्तों में और चॉकलेट्स में और सब में दूध इसलिए डालते हैं ताकि आप और खाओगे और खाओगे और एक कंपनी है वो तो कहती भी है नो वन के नीड जस्ट वन मतलब आप एक तो खा ही नहीं सकते आपको दो चार पैकेट खा जाओगे एंड वट नो बडी वॉन्ट्स टू टेल दीज अनफॉर्चुनेट बॉडी बिल्डिंग कस्टमर्स इज वाई पीपल आर सेलिंग वे प्रोटीन they're selling whey protein because when you take milk and you convert it into cheese, as the cheese becomes solid, you have all this water that's left over and you have to drain it out. And in that water that comes out of the milk as milk is turning into cheese, that water has whey protein in it. And for many years, the dairy farmers couldn't figure out what to do with all of that whey. They would bury it in a landfill. They would pay people to take it away. And somebody found out a number of years ago that they could dehydrate it, put it in a tub, and put it on the shelf and say, this will build your muscles. And sadly, people believed it, and they buy it <laughs> to this day. That's what it is. It's just a cast-off product. It's the junk of the cheese industry, and people believe it will help them. Um, there, there has been an unfortunate westernization of the Indian diet. But you know, the Indian diet, although it's quite varied, there are certain things that, that are in common, certain staples like spinach and lentils and, and rice and a wide variety of vegetables. Those are treasures. And I often wish that here in the United States, we could have an Easternization where we would learn more about the healthy food traditions from India. In many parts of India, once the cattle is dead or slaughtered, Unwanted parts like intestines and rotten flesh are dumped in open grounds and are left for animals to scavenge. From the early 1990s to the early 2000s, there was a sudden fall in the population of vultures in India. As much as 99% of vultures died mysteriously. The investigation revealed that the cause of death was kidney failure, a result of eating the carcasses of cattle that were given a pain medication called diclofenac introduced for veterinary care in 1993. Following the investigation, the drug was banned in 2006. However, pharmaceutical companies found a loophole and began selling the drug to dairy farmers in large dose vials under the pretext of human use. After a lengthy legal battle by conservationists, the selling of drugs in large doses was finally banned in 2017. But by then, it was too late. 
The disappearance of the vulture population led to the increase in dog and rat populations. A simultaneous increase in human and cattle populations meant that forests are encroached on for grazing. The wild herbivores were chased away or hunted down, which in turn led to an increase in leopards and tigers entering human settlements to prey on dogs and cattle. The practice of dairy farming contributes to human-wildlife conflicts. These conflicts have become an easy path for poachers who are incentivized to hunt down endangered wild animals. If tigers and leopards are wiped out, the natural ecosystem collapses. If the ecosystem collapses, our existence is also threatened. Despite the compelling evidence, barely any environmentalist suggested dropping the glass of milk to save vultures and the rest of our forests. Across the world, in Brazil, the import of Indian breeds has damaged the environment. The requirement of dairy and beef is being met at the cost of losing the country's forest lands. A, a lot of time ago that it started, Brazil started to, to bring from India some zebu uh, cattle. Why? Because this uh, zebu is adapted for a, a hot climate in the north of Brazil. So nowadays, about 80% of the hair is uh, from zebu. Uh, for beef and for uh, milk also. Some agricultural experts say that they feed a lot of crop residue to the animals, thus decreasing the environmental footprint. This, however, is far from reality. As per NIANP, fresh green grass food that is grown exclusively for cattle feed should be the first priority for good milk productivity. For a cow to give 5 litres of milk, she needs to be fed a minimum of 35 kilos of green fodder on a daily basis. Now multiply this with the crores of bovine animals in India that produce milk every day. The majority of the water footprint in animal agriculture is attributed to the feeding of animals, which according to NDDB is 1062 litres of water required to produce just 1 kg of milk. So with 18.7 crore tons of milk produced in 2019 alone, a whopping 200 lakh crore litres of water was used. This would be enough to fill 8 crore Olympic-sized swimming pools in one year or 20,000 crore household water tanks. Because India uses cattle primarily for milk, meat is a byproduct. And because meat is a byproduct, India has more value addition. Its expenditure on meat is practically nil. There's a second misconception. People who talk about the water footprint talk about 2,000, 10,000 liters of water per kilo of meat. Forget that this is true for Western countries which have to grow food for meat. In India, we grow cattle for milk, the water comes out as milk and we consume the milk. The net difference of water in India for meat production is practically, is very, very small compared to the rest of the world. Imagine the water problems we could solve just by eliminating dairy from our diet. A lot of fodder for bovine animals means a lot of dung. In many parts of India, dung is used as manure in agriculture fuel in cooking, as insect repellents, as biogas fuel, among others. However, the amount of dung that is required for human use is insignificant compared to the total dung that is produced by over 30 crore bovine animals. A large portion of it, especially from urban and peri-urban dairies, dump the dung into the local sewer system, which then runs into rivers and finally enters the ocean. This reduces the oxygen content leading to a decrease in the population of marine animals and creating dead zones. Animal agriculture is attributed as one of the three leading causes of dead zones, the other two being human overpopulation and industrialization. The use of fertilizers, pesticides and fungicides, commonly recommended by NDTB, for growing this animal feed also seeps into the land and water systems. All this has a detrimental impact on the local and global biodiversity. Our precious air is not that far behind. Cows and buffaloes are called ruminants, meaning 
they acquire nutrients through fermentation by bacteria inside their stomach. This leads to gas formation, releasing methane and carbon dioxide through their body. Methane is 120 times more potent than carbon dioxide when it comes to warming our earth. Each bovine animal releases an estimated 500 liters of methane every day. And India alone has over 30 crore bovine animals. As per the latest findings, animal agriculture is the major contributor to methane emissions, which is more than coal, oil and gas sectors combined. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change published a report in 2021 that is further alarming and has claimed it is unequivocal that human influence has warmed the atmosphere, ocean and land. According to the Food and Agricultural Organization, livestock takes up 77% of the global agricultural land and produces only 18% of the world's supply of calories. The rest of the calories come from plants which are grown in 23% of arable land. We do not have any more land resources other than forest land to use for animal agriculture if we continue to live and eat in the way we do today. 10 acres land is now a half acre. In 10 acres, there is a minimum minimum of 50 cows. It is comfortable. If you are in jail, you are in low play. There is simply no land for us to raise 30 crore animals if we consider raising them in their natural state of grazing and roaming. It is also not economically viable. This is the commercial animals in the real world and its production. For that, people have a response to this, that we need to give you a little bit, or if we are a little bit, then we will not be able to do it. But the people's thought is to be safe. सस्ता ही चाहिए तो वो दोनों बात तो नहीं होगा आपको ओरिजिनल भी चाहिए प्योर भी चाहिए और सस्ता चाहिए कहाँ से होगा आज तो सब सस्ता तो कुछ है नहीं तो उसके बाद भी समझो बच्चा देना बंद हो जाएगा दूध देना बंद हो जाएगा बाद में भी उसको संभालना है तो वो अगर कॉस्ट ऐड करेंगे तो लगभग आज के तारीख में सवा सौ रुपया आइडियल प्राइस है इस पर भी इनका मुनाफा नहीं है मतलब आइडियल कॉस्ट है कि उसको लास्ट तक उसको रखेंगे संभालेंगे Based on the data, the best way in solving all these problems appears to be to stop consuming all animal products, including milk. However, international organizations like the UN, having moved away from meat, are still recommending vegetarian diets rather than vegan diets to combat climate change. Their website even recommends consuming products like cheese. Is vegetarianism the ultimate solution? What would happen if everyone in the world goes vegetarian? We look at local sensitivity analysis and uh, assume that this, it can apply uh, on a global scale. That's how we fool ourselves, usually. So what I mean by local sensitivity analysis is that you look at one person going from um, full carnivore to vegetarian, and then you look at the impact of that person doing that, and then you say, oh, that's better, you know, than, because they're not eating the meat, they're not eating, they're only drinking milk so they have reduced. But when you do a global sensitivity analysis, which is what I do as a systems engineer, uh, you have to take into account what happens if everybody goes vegetarian. If everybody goes vegetarian, then we'll be proliferating the cows because we are extracting milk from her, and then no one wants to eat the cow. So then the cow population will just proliferate, right? And so, I calculated that the uh, population of cows would have to increase by a factor of eight or so on the planet if everyone went vegetarian and still demanded the same amount of animal foods from dairy products as opposed to meat. So literally what's happening is that in the current system, the people who eat beef are cleaning up after the vegetarians. Okay? And, and that's why the impact seems lower. So when I realized that, I went vegan on the spot. <laughs> consuming dairy can be just as bad for the climate as consuming any other animal product. Many experts say that the entire livestock industry could be worse for the environment than the fossil fuel industry. Like many nations around the world, the adverse effects of climate change on the future of India is alarming. As the temperatures rise, the sea levels will rise too. 
According to NASA's sea level projection, based on IPCC's sixth assessment, regions in and around the coastal city of Cochin will be underwater by more than 3.1 feet by the end of this century. Similar outcomes are projected for cities like Chennai, Mumbai, Vishakapatnam, parts of Kolkata and many other regions. There will be regions with heavier rainfall and more incidences of flash floods. Other areas will witness extreme drought, heat waves and forest fires. Human suffering and the economic impact will be grave. So just think about that. 6% of the land area of the planet, ice-free land area of the planet, is providing us with 85% of the food we eat in terms of dry weight. Because 85% of the food we eat is already plant-based. Then to get 12% of the food, which is animal-based, land animal-based, we are using 43% of the land area of the planet. Okay? And then to get 3% of the food we eat, we are destroying the entire ocean. So when we go vegan, industry is going to stop producing new animals. Then we will release over 80% of the ice-free surface of the earth back to nature and letting nature heal. So the idea is to get the, the animal population, the farmed animal population to go down from 28 billion, billion to maybe, you know, half a billion and have them in sanctuaries, you know, take care of them. And we can easily support half a billion animals and bring back all the forests that we cut. In 2020, when Joaquin Phoenix received the Oscar for the Best Actor, he spoke about using our voice for the voiceless animals. We feel entitled to artificially inseminate a cow, and when she gives birth, we steal her baby. Even though her cries of anguish are unmistakable, and then we take her milk that's intended for a calf and we put it in our coffee and our cereal. A few hours later, Amul released a cartoon mocking Walking Phoenix, where the mascot, the Amul girl, was shoving butter into Walking's mouth. In an earlier incident, Ayush, the Ministry of Alternate Medicines such as Ayurveda, shared an article recommending citizens to quit meat and dairy for health reasons. The industry panicked and soon, within a few hours, the post was also taken down. This suggests that some of the ministers from the government are in favour of veganism, but due to political pressure, are restricted from voicing their opinions. In September 2021, FSSAI proposed a set of new guidelines for labelling vegan foods, a landmark decision that will empower both consumers and food manufacturers. Dairy industry in India is quite powerful. They fund their own narratives and no politician would dare challenge them. They say plant-based milk is a foreign infiltration when we have been consuming coconut milk for thousands of years. They claim that veganism is a Western concept, but it has been recorded in history that some sections of Indians avoided consuming dairy back in the 9th century. They say consumers are fooled when in reality the dairy industry has been fooling us for decades mainly with marketing campaigns of happy animals and good health. Every day, about one lakh cows, buffaloes, bulls, oxen and calves are killed as a direct result of our demand for dairy products. That is, more than one animal is killed with each passing second. This number would be far higher if we take into account the illegal smuggling and slaughtering of these animals. The solution lies in a wide range of plant-based milks that can be easily made at home. Coconut milk making is quite easy traditionally. So we grate coconut first, then uh, with the water we will grind it, then strain it. Only three steps, very easy. In 10 minutes we will have one litre coconut milk ready for consumption as it is or with the, any of our dishes. Yes, coconut milk is uh, not a new concept. This has been there as long as coconut is there. If you buy from market, it is expensive because it's a value-added thing. If you add that value yourself, it is always very economical. If you make uh, milk from one coconut, it may roughly make one liter of coconut, uh, coconut milk. That means around 25 rupees, you will have one liter coconut milk. There are many recipes available on the internet, from milk, curd, cheese, paneer, to even sweets and ice creams, all of which can be made using plant milks. If we observe closely, 
the language of the dairy industry contains words such as animal husbandry infrastructure fund is artificial insemination the buffalo meat export butter the logistic processing capacity buttermilk income generation of sex semen ice cream generic improvement profitable manner value added dairy products economic returns benefit foreign direct investment increase the productivity marketing and yes. livestock production they never use the words compassion ethics or animal rights ultimately milk from any animal is a symbol of the bond between a mother and her children Today, under any circumstances, an interference between a mother and her child is an injustice and an act of bad karma. If you ask me, I feel it is my dharma to help bring this to your attention. Outside of giving up milk and milk products, I can only suggest a few things to you. Investigate into dairy farms by asking, where are all the male calves and bulls? Where are all the old and dry animals? Question Gaushalas. Are the calves fully fed? Are you letting them roam freely? Ask religious organizations. How are you acquiring so much milk? Ask governments. Why are laws so poorly enforced? Why are laws discriminative against buffaloes? Teach children that animals do not give us milk. We take it from them. Ask yourself, how did India become one of the largest exporters of beef in the world? And what can I do? to make things right isko suffering footprint bhi bolte hain ek concept hai ki hamara har kaam jo hai wo suffering footprint ko kitna kam kar raha hai aur hum kitna compassionate society bana rahe hain to veganism bhi usi ka part hai aur jab hum vegan hote hain chahe hamare khane ka ho kapde pehnne ka ho to obviously jo slaughter hai animals ka unka killing hai ya fir milk ke liye jo itna bada dairy industry mein itni cruelty hai wo obviously kam hoti hai Animal rights movement is the only movement where the victims are not the activists. This has also made the movement a playground for opportunists to malign and corrupt the mission with their vested interests. Tumhare samne ek bhed kat rahi hai. Uski aankhon mein roshni thi abhi abhi aur ab uske gardan se lahu ki dhaar beh rahi hai aur uski aankhon ki roshni dheere dheere mand ho rahi hai aur wo tadap rahi hai. Isme left right kya hai? और अगर आप लेफ्ट राइट की बात कर रहे हैं तो फिर ये आप एक्टिविज्म उस भेड़ के लिए नहीं कर रहे वो अपने लेफ्ट या राइट के लिए कर रहे हैं तो फिर तो ये सफल होगा भी नहीं ना इसके लिए आपको वाकई ऐसे लोग चाहिए जिनके दिल में करुणा हो इट हैज़ टू बी अ स्ट्रेट थिंग एंड द स्ट्रेट थिंग इज एक्चुअली स्परिचुअल ना इधर लेफ्ट नॉर राइट अगर आपको जानवर से प्यार है अगर आपको जीवन से प्यार है अगर आपको स्वयं से प्यार है तो आइए इसमें भागीदार बनिए लेकिन आप अपनी आइडियोलॉजी का बस्ता लेकर नहीं आ सकते कि मेरी राइटेस्ट है मैं लेफ्टिस्ट हूँ मैं चाहता हूँ कि उसके थ्रू ये आगे बढ़े फिर तो नहीं बढ़ेगा देखिए गौ रक्षा केवल एक तरीके से हो सकता है ये गाड़ियों को रोक करके मारा मारी करके इसको एक हिंदू मुसलमान करके ऐसे नहीं होगा ये गौ रक्षा होगा जब आप दूध पीना बंद कर देंगे जब आप दूध पीना बंद कर देंगे तो खुद ब खुद गाय कम हो जाएंगी खुद ब खुद मीट इंडस्ट्री पैकअप हो जाएगी तो अगर आपको गौरक्षक बनना है तो आज से ही दूध पीना बंद कर दें बजाय कि वायलेंस से कुछ काम ले लें वट एवर आई शेयर हियर इज जस्ट अ ब्लेड ऑफ ग्रास इन फ्रंट ऑफ अ माउंटेन राइट नाउ डेरी इज एक्सपोर्टेड फ्रॉम इंडिया टू ओवर हंड्रेड कंट्रीज एंड द इंडस्ट्री इज ओनली एमिंग टू एक्सपैंड फर्दर हेंस it is also a global responsibility the reason why many of our ancestors adopted a vegetarian diet is similar to why we should adopt a vegan diet today may this be the next step in our evolution it is time to end this cruelty it is time to break the wheel jai hind